Hey everybody, it's Friday Philosophy, and I am chilling out on the patio. Got me a little scotch, got me a little pipe, and uh, we're going to have a little chat. I've been saying I'm not going to talk politics. I'm not going to talk politics. Well, guess what, folks? I'm going to talk politics. But don't tune out yet. Um, this has been a particularly interesting week in a number of ways, but I'm only going to dive into one of them tonight, and that would be Kathy Griffin. Oh, you betcha. Because, you know, who doesn't want to hang out with a gal who holds up the uh, bloody effigy, uh, or bloody head effigy of our current commander-in-chief? Now, here's the trick. If you were offended by that, but you weren't offended when someone was burning an effigy of a black man in the South a few years back, you might be a Republican. If you were offended by the burning of the effigy, but you find the bloody head of the current commander-in-chief to be edgy art or edgy comedy, I believe she referred to it directly as, you might be a Democrat and or liberal. And here's the problem that makes you, uh, dare I say it, all hypocrites, if that's, if that's where you stand on the matter. Because here's the reality in both situations. It is freedom of speech and it is protected by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I hate to say that. Uh, I found both instances to be offensive. But neither could be construed uh, unless you really want to stretch the boundaries as a terroristic threat. Uh, Kathy Griffin, while offensive and uh, certainly intentional, there was no threat made directly against our President of the United States. Similarly, with the burning effigies, uh, in, you know, whenever, wherever that was post-election uh, four or five years ago, also no direct threat made against the President of the United States. Are both distasteful? Absolutely. Are both offensive, in my opinion? Yes. Are both protected? Yes. And uh, here's ultimately where I'm going with this, and I'm going to try to keep this video brief. Um, we're headed down a dangerous path, and probably have been for some time, uh, maybe even as long as I have been alive. Uh, we once were the freest country on the planet and we had the the freedoms and the rights to do a great many things uh, that we no longer have because of rules, because of regulations, because of litigations, because of frickin' politicians. And um, I'm gonna just say it right now, I am a libertarian and I am proud to be one. Um, I'm not going to dive into foreign policy for any of you that might be curious on my stance on that as a libertarian, but uh, we claim to be free, but we are not, because everything in our lives is either taxed or regulated, and uh, that is kind of the antithesis of freedom, as it were. We are certainly a prosperous nation, and for that I am very thankful, but as it goes to freedom, uh, we are giving that up more and more every day, whether we realize it um, or not. And I think that's maybe the scariest thing of the modern political landscape, is that we are so quick to choose sides on every issue based on our political party or affiliation that uh, we're losing sight of the forest for the trees. You know, individual issues get us riled up and we retreat to our keyboards where we can anonymous, anonymously trash the political opposition um, in almost every instance. 
and uh, you know we could use the Paris Accord and the recent withdrawal from that as another example but I may hold that for a different video um, or I may not uh, I like I've said many times I don't want this to be a political uh, thing that I do each week but the Kathy Griffin thing in particular is so maddening to me that I, I just can't not say something. So I'm talking. If you're still here, you're listening. You may hate what I'm saying. You may love it. But uh, I'm going to keep talking anyway. You know, every time a political issue arises, and again, you know, it, it could be global warming, Sorry, just checking the local traffic. It could be global warming. It could be Guantanamo Bay. It could be uh, taxation, you know, whether it's income tax, general tax code, uh, universal health care. Um, so we have the uh, ACA, or Obamacare, as some of you may call it, and Donald Trump runs on repealing it. Okay, great. So they present, the Republicans present their own plan, which has been referred to by some as Obamacare light. What does that mean? What it really means is neither political party uh, has presented a solution that truly benefits a free market or a free society. Both uh, require taxation and um, in order to implement them in any real sense. So they are still robbing the public to pay for health care. And you know, some, some will tell you that's okay, and some will say, I'm willing to pay some taxes, but not as much. Well, what, what are we really doing if we live in a free country, the most free and prosperous in the history of the world, when we tell our government, which is proven to be inept in almost every sense of the word, in the course of history, find me a good program that the government has instituted that hasn't then either been bungled later or was bungled when it was implemented. Um, I guess my point is when we continue to rely on our political parties to make decisions for us we continually become less free and uh, that's the scary part and that's why and where I became a libertarian was post 9-11 uh, started to understand with the implementation of the Patriot Act which everybody was in favor of at the time we need more government oversight well maybe but do we need intrusion of privacy do we need the TSA at the airport all of these things are an infringement on our rights and some people will say well I don't do anything wrong I'm okay with it okay that is your choice to say those things that's not mine I don't want that to be my life that when I go somewhere I have to be frisked and I'm not doing anything illegal either but that's precisely why I shouldn't be frisked and that was that was one of the fundamentals that our country the US was built upon and one of the things that concerns me most is as we have these political arguments these political disagreements we have some folks on the uh, conservative right or on the Republican right that are saying that uh, Kathy Griffin should be investigated or charged with, I've even heard, treason. No, 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 a thousand times no. What she did I find offensive and tasteless. But it is still protected speech. She did not yell fire in a crowded theater. She did not make a direct threat against the President of the United States, although some would argue uh, that she did. That is not what, in my opinion, happened. And I think most, most folks, if they are genuine with their thoughts, would agree that yes, you could say it's a threat, but it really, truly was not. Um, again, the same thing with the burning of the black effigy um, after Obama's election. Is it racist? Yes. Is it offensive? Yes. Is it protected by the First Amendment? Yes. Um, so that said, every time we have an issue and there is an outcry from both sides or either side,
What typically results from that is further regulation and further infringement on our rights in a free, quote unquote, free society. And that's not how it's supposed to be. But every time an issue arises and those regulations or those rules are implemented, are prosecuted, are enforced, we take one step closer to becoming uh, a dictatorship or a uh, monarchy. Um, we get ever closer to finding ourselves in a situation not dissimilar to Venezuela where it is ruled ultimately by one person and the government under him uh, who is not allowed to disagree and largely was put in place by that one person. Uh, it's okay to have disagreements on politics. It's okay to have heated and vehement debates. But what's not okay is not being honest with the actual issue itself and not admitting that under different circumstances, the same actions or similar actions were okay. What we do not need is to force our political parties to increase or enact further regulations on our freedoms because we disagree with a particular action. That is a slippery slope and one that is headed towards a very dangerous place. Um, so, political rant aside, I, I apologize if any of you felt as though this was a lecture, that was not the intent. But what it is, hopefully, is a chance for you to examine your own position on um, some relevant current issues and to maybe add a little perspective in terms of where you stand versus the Constitution and Bill of Rights, which gave most of us, if you are a U.S. citizen, I know there's some of you beyond our borders that are watching this, um, but even though, you know, even you beyond the borders, to take a serious look at where, where your true beliefs lie in a scale of his hypocrisy. And one of the things uh, that I, I la latched onto today, I've seen it before, but was a political cartoon where on one side are a couple of screaming people saying, he's right, he's right, and on the other end of the scale are a couple of people saying, he's wrong, he's wrong, and in the middle is the vast majority of people just saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. Um, so, you know, maybe if nothing else, this is a chance to, to um, examine where you lie on the political spectrum in terms of whether or not the things that we get enraged about um, or really truly involved in are worth the effort and worth the, the outrage from either side, you know, whether you believe you're right or not. Um, we're all basically the same. I have many friends who are liberal Democrats. I have many friends who are uber conservative. Again, I myself fall in libertarian territory, which means I get in disagreements with both. Ain't my life great. Uh, nevertheless, didn't mean to bog this down. I hope you didn't find it too depressing. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm enjoying a little Cornell and Deal's professor also have a little Clan McGregor and water in my scotch glass. Starting to get dark. I'm going to turn on my patio light, enjoy the rest of my pipe, and probably call it a night. That'd be the siren song of my beagle. He doesn't like interlopers. What can I do? Anyway, no matter where you are, I hope you're having a great evening and a great weekend. We'll talk to you again soon.